Why is Lee Abrams here? I don't know. Lee's out there. You want to get him in here? Wow, really? He's a <laughs> legend in the radio business. Did he uh, fly to Teterboro on his private plane? Did he fly here from Washington? <laughs> With Morgan uh, Freeman? Yeah, we got <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Morgan Freeman got his pilot's license taken away. One of the big uh, muckety mucks of XM Satellite Radio is here. And, um, which one is he? That's, that guy just brought us donuts. No, no, which one is Lee Abrams? Is the guy that looks like Stephen King in the office? <laughs> is that? No, that's not him either. Where's Lee? He's right there. Where? Ah, oh, there's Lee. Who's Lee? Does he want to come in and say hi? Maybe give us some advice or something? No? Look at him. Fuck you is guys. That him with the I don't like you. <laughs> right there, man. Wow. <laughs> How long has Jack Warden worked at XM? <laughs> what a psycho. This guy's a legend. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's a legend in the business. You gotta legend. give He is. You wow. gotta give respect to Lee Abrams. Always give respect to Lee Abrams. Lee, how you doing? I'm great. How are you? Great. What are you doing in town? Uh, we're here for a high-level music industry conference. In uh -huh. With an uh, accent on the high. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the plan. Yes. Did you uh, fly up here? No, it's a uh, company policy that I have to take commercial because uh, if I run into an apartment building, it's an XM. Oh, liability. then XM. Wow. How about that? But on weekends. Uh, you fly around. Oh, yeah. Pilot, what do you think of Morgan Freeman having his pilot's license taken away? Did you read that? No, what happened? He uh, came in and approached at uh, Teterboro, and he didn't uh, inform them that he <laughs> had intentions to land there. <laughs> hey, what a dumb shit. You can, so you can say dumb shit, right? Yeah, yeah you yeah, can. Yeah. We have the XL designation. Ah, and we're right. a premium hey, what a channel. Dumb shit. That's unbelievable. That's... Now, of course, you would have to let people at Teterboro know you're, you, you have intention to land. Yeah, particularly around New York and D.C., yeah. it really helps. How long How long you been flying? Started in high school back in the uh, eight, late 1800s. And then, uh, <laughs> late 1800s. Now, that was, when did you go to high school about? Uh, 1966, gra barely graduated in 70. So you were flying drugs into this country. Pretty well, much I, what I, any kid that was a pilot back then was doing. I'm not allowed to discuss that. <laughs> like, why would a kid in the 60s want to become a pilot? No, Unless shit, it was to actually, napalm Vietnamese or fly drugs in. It was a chick magnet. Was it? Oh, are you kidding? Probably. Oh, yeah. yeah private aircraft that. was so much safer back then, weren't they? How did you no. live through that? <laughs> hey, did you want to work Jesus. for Pan Am? Was that like the goal? Like, Pan Am, that was the big airline back Commercial then? Commercial pilot? Yeah. Well, pilot I was, uh, I was always into music and... Uh, and flying, I figure if I was a pilot, I couldn't do the music thing, professional pilot. But if I got into radio, I could do both. So yeah, he no gave problem. us the best rah rah speech down at uh, he the gives Washington the headquarters. The best pump up speech. It is not well, the ordinary corporate guy, is what it is. Well, that's yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's pretty we're here real. To revolutionize life. things, change the change it. Yep. I mean, you know, and that requires a whole new kind of thinking, and that ain't corporate. Yeah, it's a well, totally different side, thinking you know. than, than commercial radio, which you were involved in for uh, many years also. Oh, yeah, but this is the big one. Yeah. I, I, well, this is a lot like I was uh, there when FM sort of came out of the closet from playing dentist office music tapes and became mainstream. And uh, back then, you know, AM was dominant, you know, had huge ratings, and FM was mm -hmm. just sort of stuck playing uh, playing back instrumental tapes of orchestral Beatle favorites, and uh, <laughs> but literally in about four or five years, it, the whole thing changed, and FM became dominant, AM became relegated mainly to, to sports and talk, or just went away, and I see the same thing now, except the culprit isn't AM, it's FM, and F XM is doing the FM, what FM did to AM many years ago, and that requires just massive change, obviously the technology is is you know incredibly uh, better, but it's also you know what happens over the year, the sound. And just like, you know, in 1969, when we were in the drug revolution, the sexual revolution, Vietnam, riots on the street, moon landings, AM radio was like in Leave it to Beaver land doing a very, you know, black and white crew cut kind of, hey, everything's great radio. And meanwhile, there's this whole thing happening on the streets. FM came in and addressed it in a 19, then in a 1970 kind of way. And listeners, you know, they freaked. They loved it. And now... You look at FM stations, and they're playing by the 1972 playbook. You know, ninth caller wins, and they, two for Tuesday, block party weekend, and the lies. You know, the best music. That's bullshit. <laughs> so what we are doing at XM, you know, across the system, is creating a, just a sound that is as uh, revolutionary to today's listeners as FM was when it first emerged as a, as a force, you know. God, 35 years ago. Yeah, we're the home of rock and roll here, right? Hey, the home of rock and roll. Oh, it's unbelievable. I have a cliche list. We have a cliche buzzer back at, uh, in Washington. Somebody comes up with a cliche, they get buzzed, three buzzes, and you're fired. You know, it's the, the, the bragging, the best music, the most. Or, um, 
Uh, your ninth caller wins is great. Yeah. You know, every time, you, it's like an FCC law that when you give away a prize, it has to be to the ninth caller, which was great in 1970 when the touchtone telephone was invented. You know, hey, let's do speed dialing because nobody has dial phones anymore. You know, that was like 35 years. Isn't there a different way to give away a prize than ninth caller? And uh, the big voice, you know, that, like, please, very yeah. impressive many years ago when, particularly in rock radio, when we were threatened by new wave music and, you know, crew cuts and disco and, you know, rock and roll is all about 180 degrees from that. And so as a result, the radio station kicked ass. We rock. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> stations still do that. It was like years ago. I mean, we the disco kick menace ass. is gone. We don't have to worry about it. Yeah. We won. <laughs> so uh, I can go on and on. But I no, we like this. Uh, it's great. And, yeah. And the production, the he, he told us, if you guys are doing any production, don't use the lasers. <laughs> oh, yeah. Star Wars. Uh, the best music. Pew, pew. Where, I mean, you know, the Empire has been defeated back in 1979. It's, it's over. Uh, it's amazing. What's really scary is I like to watch TV but turn the uh, picture down and just listen to the commercials. Car commercials, army commercials. They're so much cooler than what you hear on most FM radio today, you know, as far as the yeah. stuff that happens between the songs, those little audio. It's uh, army commercials are cool. You know, they're like, it's just. Oh, the Navy, yeah. All that stuff. And car commercials particularly uh, are just, you know. Yeah, a lot of car commercials. Now, it used to be bands were selling out if they uh, sold any of their uh, songs to companies to use in commercials. And it was years and years after the song came out that they would sell the songs to the company uh, to use. Now, I mean, there's hit songs that are just coming out that are now, you see them on Cadillac commercials. and uh, Oh, yeah. And now it's not selling out anymore. That's true. Of course, the whole music business is kind of sick in that sellout way. But hey, it's a different, <laughs> a different conversation. Yeah. But um, yeah, the production on, on most stations today—it's radio. You know, we should be theater of the mind, sonic, taking it to the next level. You know, ethereal, head, heady, cerebral, and most of it's just ugh, pukers. You know, bragging about how great they are and the block party weekend, and then Star Wars sound effects. It's, it's like horrible. Yeah. But we're gonna fix that. All we right. are. Lee Abrams. Hey, thank, thank you very you much. Lee. A legend. Up for a high, uh, high what? High level. High, high level. level. Industry meeting. Uh -huh. High uh -huh. level industry meeting. Hmm. Yeah. If he's in town, to there's got to be something I know. You're going never on. in oh, New York. This is the first time we've out. seen you in, uh, since we've been here. So. Well, I will be back. Ooh. Invite me. We'll do part B of the whole thing. Hell yeah. See ya. Bye.